where I've shown a little restraint in the house. The garden is where I can indulge my excessive traits. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. We've got some amazing homes to tour this week on both coasts and even in London. And we are bringing it all to you from the heart of Midtown at this sleek sky-high duplex penthouse. It features a calm, minimalist aesthetic throughout with 18-foot ceilings and exposures to the east, west, and south for city views all day and night. Views brought closer with two wraparound terraces. The open concept great room encourages an easy flow from space to space, perfect for entertaining. And at the end of the day, retreat to this luxurious primary suite with marble-clad bathroom and its very own terrace. It's one of five bedrooms in in this over 4,300 square foot home. You've probably heard it before, space is at a premium, especially here in New York. But where some see limitations, others see opportunity. When Adam and Carolina, principals of Only If Architecture, set out to design their home in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, they selected a lot deemed too small for a house, but using an innovative floor plan that maximizes light, flow, and functionality, they created what they call the Narrow House. See for yourself. This is my partner, Adam Frampton. And this is my partner, Carolina Chomchak. We have an office called Only If Architecture based in New York. And this is our house in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, New York. The dimensions of the lot is 13 foot 4 wide by 100 feet deep, which is atypical and created a lot of constraints, but also creative opportunities. And it also led to the name The Narrow House. The house is finished in black stucco, which has silicon carbide sprayed into it, which gives it a kind of sparkling finish. It's mostly glass in the front and the back to maximize daylight to the inside. You'll also notice that we have some large structural braces. That's the lateral structure of the building because we don't have any walls inside the house. When you walk into the house, you're entering a large open space. The dining area is located in front of the house in order to allow the living area to be closer to the backyard and open up through the big pivot door. The kitchen is organized in a form of a long counter and all the storage and appliances are located and built into the counter space. The exposed pipes are all the services of the house coming from the upper floors and it's a kind of chosen aesthetic to expose them throughout the house. The living room and the backyard are facing south and allow a lot of daylight into the space. The furniture throughout the house is obviously a collection of things that we like. In this space, we chose a combination of furniture based on a more natural palette, including leather upholstery and a jute rug. Another effect of the large-scale windows is the surprising presence of the landscape and greenery from the backyard inside the house. The living spaces of the house extend into a backyard through a metal grating deck that steps down into a planted greenery. When you look back at the house from the garden, you can see a square, large-scale opening that allows for a continuation of the outdoor space into the inside and understanding a kind of split level of the house. The stairs are a central and organizing device inside a house that create a spatial division in the absence of the walls. The openness of the stair, both in terms of form, allows for a central void that brings the light into a center of the floor plan on the ground floor. At the same time, the perforated metal from which the stairs are made allows for diaphanous effects and light patterns on other surfaces. At the top of the staircase, there is a south-facing outdoor roof deck, which is a great space to relax. We think the house really demonstrates the creative potential of leftover and irregular spaces in the city. We're really lucky to live in a space that we designed ourselves. And thank you for taking this tour with us. 
That home is a testament to how inspired architecture can defy limitations. Coming up just after the break, we are in London visiting the home and garden of legendary hairstylist Sam McKnight. Welcome back everyone. To say hairstylist Sam McKnight is legendary is an understatement. Throughout his career, he has created iconic looks for such notables as Kate Moss, Lady Gaga, the Hadid sisters, and the late Princess Diana. When he's not traveling the world from shoots to fashion shows, he returns to his stylish home and garden in North London. Yeah, I said London. We are in London, everyone. Let's join him for a closer look. Hello, my name is Sam McKnight. I'm a hairstylist and welcome to my home in London. Come on, let's have a look. So I've lived here for about 11 years. It's an Edwardian house built in 1905. A lot of the original features were still here, like the beautiful tessellated floor. You know, the door frames, the ceiling detail, the stained glass window in the back, that was all original, it's still there. And I kept that. I don't have any kind of design aesthetic. I just see things, I buy them. I do have a particular liking to flowers, fresh flowers, many of them from my garden. But this is just the start, let's continue. This is my living room. This is where I just lounge. This is where I'm, I can be by myself. I didn't move in here with an eye to design my own home. I just felt if I have a blank canvas where the structure is the original historical structure and it looks out to the garden in the summer, then I can put in modern stuff, I can put old stuff. You've got a nice fireplace in the winter. These lights up here, I found in an antique store. They call them Sputnik lights. They have beautiful glass flowers on the end of the spike, so it reflects a lot of light. There's sort of muted floral weave carpet with muted colors. There's a leopard print rug that I bought. I have quite a few. I buy lots of jugs. There's something about a jug where flowers look great in it. And this was my grandmother's jug. I've inherited that, which I love. I just love an interesting, funky jug, you know? The cheaper, the better. This is one of my prized possessions. This was a gift from Karl Lagerfeld. I worked with Karl on Chanel for many, many years. And one of my favorite shows was the Chanel supermarket show. And Karl gave me one of the Chanel shopping baskets, which I treasure to this day. So this is my library. I built some shelves which kind of became more shelves and became a library. And now my books are kept very well. So this is a book called Hair by Sam McKnight. It does what it says on the tin. I was asked to do a quite a, a large exhibition of my work. It was the first hair exhibition that's ever been done in this country. I then I <laughs> had to edit 40,000 images down to about 900, which are all kind of packed beautifully in this gorgeous book. I put the leopard carpet there because I found it in a sale and I love a half price bargain and it looked really good. So home it came. I tend to collect a lot of pillows because, well, you can't go wrong with a pillow, can you? I like things to have a bit of joy in them. A few sort of frivolous pillows can bring a little colorful joy into a room. These curtains come from the last lace making looms in, in Scotland, MYB textiles they're called. The pattern reflects the mood of the garden really with birds and flowers and trees and they do such a beautiful job. So I have now Scottish lace curtains in all my windows. This part of the house, which is the kitchen, as you can see, this did not exist when I bought the house. It has glass walls and huge glass skylights that just flood the room with light. This is my product line. As you can see, the colors are directly inspired by the flowers in my garden. What I love about this room is it feels like you're actually in the garden. When we come back, you're gonna finally see my garden oasis. Stick around, we have more with Sam after the break, including a closer look at that garden. You know what, I feel like after seeing him, I should just go give this a brush, do a little primping, so I'll see you in just a few.
Welcome back everyone. Now we rejoin renowned hairstylist Sam McKnight in London for a closer look at his favorite part of the home, the garden. See for yourself. So this is my garden and this is the reason why I fell in love with this place when I first saw it. A garden is important because being in nature and surrounded by such beauty is incredibly relaxing. For me, the garden isn't about some kind of formal architectural display. Mine is more wild. It's the same as the house. It's completely packed. It's probably overplanted, but that's how I like it. It's just exploding with color and it's incredible. I've packed a lot into this little rectangle. This is my favorite rose. It's called Munstead Wood and it's the most beautiful dark bluish red and the roses get really big. They look like sort of crumpled red velvet. They're absolutely divine. That's my absolute favorite. When I'm out here, I've usually got my secateurs in my hand and I'm usually kind of snipping and chopping, like getting these sweet peas out of the way so that they'll keep flowering. But I like to kind of potter around. It's pure luxury for me having a garden. When I bought the house, it was a rectangle, 120 feet long by 40 feet wide. And I got my friend, Joe Thompson, who's a garden designer, to come and help me with the original planning. And she split the garden into three rooms. And this being the first garden room is a kind of winding borderline. So it takes your eye on a bit of a journey. So your eye kind of goes to this path. And then as you come around here, there's a little surprise. There's another room because from the house, you don't know that this exists. Then you can go through this room into the arch, which a few weeks ago was covered in the most incredible roses, into the last room, which is the vegetables and the potting shed. The tomatoes have started, so we'll get those in a, in a few weeks. And this one has got a little lost, but she's still, she's still producing fruit, so we'll have those very soon, in the next couple of days. I have some kale, leeks, peas, chilies, lettuce. I got the quince tree because I love the blossom of a quince tree. It's really pretty in the spring. Actually, they're incredible. I cook with them all the time. So this is about form and function. It's not just a flower garden. It is a kitchen garden too. So the rooms are threaded together by these paths. Now, I have to be honest, the paths are getting narrower and narrower as the years go on because I keep planting more plants. It's an incredibly addictive hobby. The paths are getting thinner, but I think I'm always going to have some kind of thread running through them because that's how the whole thing works. I like it when the plants spill over these edges. I'm not about harsh lines in the garden. I like the boundaries all blurred. I guess what I tend to do in everything is I push it to the limit, which is what I do in my job as well. Where I've shown a little restraint in the house and I've learned to show a little restraint in my work, the garden is where I can indulge my excessive traits. So I've shown you guys around my place. I've shown you my, my private little haven, my little oasis in the middle of the big city. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have had you here and we'll see you next time. Thank you for showing us around, Sam. When we come back, we are bringing it back to the States and we're in Venice, California. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now we're with entrepreneur Ashley Sumner, founder of the social network Quilt. She shows us her serene and welcoming home in Venice, California, that's all about indoor outdoor living. It's a home that embraces you and feels like a world away from the bustle of LA. See why. Hi, my name is Ashley Sumner. I'm the founder of the supportive social network Quilt, and I'm looking forward to sharing my home with you today. Something that we really love about this space that no other home in Venice Beach, California has is that it was built into kind of the subterranean floor. So as you walk in, you actually step down and emerge into 
the house. The first thing that welcomes you is our outdoor area, where oftentimes I get to sit with my partner and have a coffee, or when my team comes together, we move all the furniture away and we get to do yoga. And we do have a front door, but I personally love using this one because it opens wide up from the outdoors, indoors, come on in. Once you come inside, you'll notice that we use a lot of the same colors and natural elements that you saw outside. Green is not only one of my favorite colors, but it's also the color on the center of the color spectrum, which for me is really about happiness and feeling calm and feeling grounded. Even though downstairs is an open floor plan, we intentionally created the dining room space to be a place where you can sit down and have a moment together. Once you sit down, it's very intimate. This chandelier casts a light just over this table and the people that are sitting here eating together. It's made out of wood, and on the inside, it's painted gold with a wraparound LED light. It's really beautiful. And when you look down, there's this green marble table. And wherever you're sitting, you have a different experience. The theme of downstairs is calm, but the theme of upstairs, and specifically my office, is creativity and inspiration and passion. It's from here that I come up with different ideas for my company quilt. There's a lot of special elements in here, starting with this table. This table is a red leather wrapped round edged table. Red is the color of passion. It's the color of creativity. So whether it's a red desk or that red chair from the 19th century or a red butterfly kind of reminding me about the power of transformation and becoming beautiful. I like using it. Welcome to my bedroom, a very romantic space, very poetic. Also has certain elements that just leave me feeling serene, like this Arabic calligraphy roomy poem that's hanging above our beds while we sleep. My favorite items in here are our bedside tables. They are super unique, handcrafted uh, by a local artist in LA, and they're a puzzle piece. So you can open this, you turn it over, and that is how it opens. Isn't that cool? When I wake up in the morning, after I meditate, I open up the curtains, I open up the doors, and I am greeted by this patio, which is overlooking the other homes and nature, surrounded by jasmine, and I see the sunrise and I feel really grateful. Well, that's all I've got for the tour. Thank you so much for stopping by. Coming up, we're in Croton on Hudson for a look at this modernist masterpiece. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now we are taking a look at this modernist masterpiece by one of the 20th century's iconic architects, Marcel Breuer. And this stunning example of architectural artistry has been lovingly preserved by its owner. Take a look. Hi, I'm Ken Senna. Welcome to our home in Croton on Hudson, New York. This is known as the Newman House. It was designed for Vera Newman and her husband George. Vera was a famous fashion icon of the mid-century. And the Newman House was designed by Marcel Breuer, a famous mid-century architect who was also well known for his furniture design. The house is over 4,000 square feet. It's six bedrooms, including the one bedroom that's in the guest house, which is separated by a breezeway. And it sits on three and a half acres. As part of this house, one of the things he really experimented with was the use of color and he introduced these floating cinder walls in red, blue, and white. And while he didn't use a lot of color inside the house, he was able to position the walls outside in a way that the glass would allow them to enter. And I think that the playfulness of that interior and exterior effect that Breuer was able to so successfully do here is something that is still really appreciated by people who visit. On the left, you can enter towards the kitchen and towards where the kids' rooms generally are. Or you can enter to the right, and as you enter the right, you enter the living areas. You walk by a freestanding fireplace, and as you come around the freestanding fireplace, that was where you see the view open up. 
And I think the thing that we love the most about the house is just in general, the, the minimalist detail. You'll see the ceilings are a Hungarian cypress, but when we look at the floors, you'll actually see slate throughout. So off the living room is the study. It's where the original owner, Vera Newman, actually worked in the early 70s when Vera decided that she wanted to take up swimming again. Breuer and the firm returned to the house and designed an indoor swimming pool experience off the study. We wanted to introduce something in the house as a reflection of Vera's artistry, and so we came up with the idea of the sculpture in the pool room that reflected some of the simplicity of her designs. As you look through the house, there's an appreciation for materials, there's an appreciation for simplicity, not only through the architect who built and designed the house, but also the clients who it was built for. Their legacies have been around simplicity, quality of craft, and ultimately making good design accessible to the masses. We love living in the Newman House, we have loved the restoration, and we hope you enjoyed the tour. I can't believe the show's already over. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, because we're going to keep giving you these amazing homes.